had um, candidate, writing candidate Jim McKenna, who's running for attorney general, and he um, he called for cameras in the courtroom. Um, being that you guys are going to be having the uh, cameras in your broadcasting your your stuff, yep. should cameras be allowed in the courtrooms? I think they are now um, in, in in courtrooms across the Commonwealth. So. Television cameras. What you know, these individuals going in and videotaping? Well, j yeah, just recording so the public, so the people can actually. I mean, see I don't that. think there's an issue with that. I wouldn't have a problem with that. The only problem that I would have is that some trials, um, too many. There's too many lawyers who play to the camera and not to the judge or not to the jury. Uh, and I think you see that in some of the bigger cases that you see on, you know, some of the Fox News stations, stuff like that. Uh, so you just have to be careful that we, if we do it, we do it in a way that still has the dignity and respect that the courtroom deserves uh, and that those who are on trial deserve. It's not just about um, you know, the camera in the courtroom. If you're a defendant and you're charged with a crime, whether you're guilty or not, uh, you don't want to make a circus out of it. And you want to ensure that that individual whose liberty is at stake is receiving a fair trial. Uh, so there's plenty of times when cameras are in the courtroom. If we do it, we just need to make sure there's some structure to it. But I, don't, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Now, some say that. Um Court opens at 9 o'clock, yet we see judges coming in on the bench at 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Should judges be sitting on the bench at 9 o'clock when courtroom? It depends, Hector. I mean, not all, I mean, you know, not all of being a judge is about sitting on that, uh, sitting behind, on the chair behind the bench. A lot of it is, you know, research, it's writing, uh, it's reading the materials. That, look, at as a lawyer, sometimes they, that morning, uh, you know, you have 20 cases before you as a judge. You have 20 different lawyers filing you know, all kinds of motions. So a lot of it is preparing for the day at hand. So, uh, yeah, I think judges need to do a better job. Trust me, I sat there, uh, even in the 18 when I was in the assistant attorney general, you sit there and it's, I call it, you hurry up and wait. You rush in the court, you get there at 8.55, you think it's 9 o'clock, and you wait, you know, you wait until 9.30, 10 o'clock sometimes. And then there's other times like, all right, listen, the judge is never there on time. I'll get there at 9.15. And the judge is there at 9 o'clock, and they're ready to default you yeah. <laughs> for being late. <laughs> so uh, it's, a, it's that hurry up and wait mentality, but it's difficult. I mean, a lot of people see that's the face is when they're at, on the bench, but a lot of the work that they do is sort of behind the scenes. It's reading, it's, it's updating on the law, and it's understanding what is coming before them. And, and, and there's a lot of that that morning, uh, or, or you know, emails that come in. A lot of judges now are requesting things via email in terms of pleadings to save on paper. So you, you, you're seeing more and more of that. So that morning they're showing up. Uh, as long as that's the reason, uh, it, you know, if they're doing other things, no, they should, be, they should be there at 9, they should be on the bench. If it means getting there a little early, uh, I think most of them get there early and hopefully they get there early and they're, and they're prepared to go forward. And what about um, open public records um, made public to, to the public? Um, most people say that those documents are not public because they have to pay for it. Um, what can be done yeah, to, it's, to it's, make it's, them? It's ludicrous, to be honest with you. The, the price uh, that some communities, uh, some agencies charge, in essence, make it uh, not open, not public. So we need to look at that this year. There's been this push now, and, and I've been there seven, eight years now. There's a couple issues that have sort of always been out there but never been sort of at the forefront. The open meeting law is now an issue that's out there. It's open. It's not open. It's, it's out front. People are really talking about it. And that's one of the big issues uh, that people talk about. I mean, to charge, you know, 50 cents a dollar per page, uh, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And that sort of defeats the whole purpose of giving people the opportunity to look at documents. And it might just be sometimes what the fed, federal government does is they'll open it up and say, okay, Here's a room, here's the documents, take a look at them. Uh, when you're done, come out. Uh, as opposed to requiring people to go in and put up a lot of money up front to photocopy. Now, from the government side, I understand the argument that you're taking someone away from doing their normal duties to sit at a copy machine all day to make copies. But there's a balance there. We just gotta figure out what that is. What are you hearing um, as you go um, knocking door to door? Because I know you, yeah. you're out there knocking on all different doors. So what are you hearing from your constituents? There's, there's frustration. Uh, I think people are angry a lot. I think there's a lot more anger on the national level, but it sort of filters its way down. I think they want uh, a level playing field. They think government is spending too much, and they're right. Uh, and we need to do a better job of leveling that playing field. It's one of the areas I've always talked about. It's jobs, taxes, and accountability. That's sort of what I've ran on eight years ago, nine years ago. It's what I'm running on today. It's to continue to fight for those issues that matter. People are struggling. They're hurting. And uh, they don't see government right now uh, helping. They see government, I mean, look at, look at the illegal immigration issue. Uh, how do we lay off police, fire, teachers, as I said earlier, the assistant district attorneys, you know, the whole gamut of public sector employees 
uh, yet we're providing benefits to those who are here illegally? It doesn't make any sense. Um, so there's more that we can be doing. And uh, what's next for Senator Bedour? <laughs> what's running for re-election. Uh, so we're up for re-election this November. Uh, hopefully, uh, we're going to have the opportunity to get out there to explain, uh, you know, the issues. That go be able to, I think, it, I, what I love about elections, it gives, it gives those of us in office the opportunity to remind people uh, of the things that we've done. Not everyone's going to agree. I think a lot of people paint a broad brush, and they say all Democrats are like, all Republicans are like Tea Parties. Uh, and I think there's a lot of us who uh, are independent, who look at the issues. I think it was John F. Kennedy who said, it doesn't matter if it's a Democratic issue or a Republican issue. If it's right for the people you represent, then you support it. And I like to think I've done that on a number of controversial issues. And uh, we're going to continue to do that. What is one of the bills that um, you plan on working on to see through um, that is signed into law? I think one of the ones clear that we're going to be working on is that one dealing with, uh, well, zero-based budgeting is one that we're going to continue to fight for. The issue that I'm hearing more and more, especially from small business owners, uh, is, the, is the regulatory uh, burden that as legislators in government, we don't see it because we'll pass a law, give it to the bureaucrats, and then they'll just expand upon it. So we've got to rein that back in. That's one of the big issues that I'm hearing more and more and more about from especially small business owners who are just, you know, they're not sure. They're going to bed every night not sure they can open the doors the next day. And it's in part because of all of the bureaucratic red tape paperwork uh, you know, the, the mandates that not only government's putting on them, but the bureaucratic government is putting on them. That's stuff that we don't see every single day, uh, and it's an area that we need to focus on. What are some of the um, ways that you think can help these small business owners uh, to expand? I, I know right now that there, um, there's a cap on how many people they can hire before they're mandated to pay health insurance. Mm -hmm. Should that number increase a little bit just to yeah, give them room? Or? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the areas that we need to look at in light of the federal government passing its health care bill, Massachusetts obviously was first in doing it. We need to look at both bills and where Massachusetts is overly generous, we need to pull it back and sort of match the, the, the federal side. Where there's duplication, we should eliminate the state mandate, uh, become more in line with, with what the federal government has said, if that's what's going to continue. Uh, one of the areas that we need to do for state government, again, is level that playing field. We need to eliminate the sales tax, for example, on alcohol. I mean, there's no reason why that should be double taxed. We should bring back the sales tax to 5% so that at least we are somewhat a little bit more competitive uh, with our friends up north. So there's this tax structure that we need to do, tax policy that we need to do more of. Uh, and it's, again, I think it's, it's sort of just it's getting that bureaucratic red tape out of the way. And that's a new issue. A lot of times people for the last couple of years have really been talking about the health care side. We've done that. I think the, the group insurance per buy that we, we've passed last year is going to make a huge difference. The sales tax holiday was helpful. We need to do more of those uh, for the border communities. But at the same time, it's the bureaucratic red tape we need to go more after. Well, we appreciate Senator Bedore being here with us today, being open and transparent for the constituents of his community. Uh, and. Why don't you tell the viewers how they can reach you uh, if they want to help you out on uh, holding signs, support you in your campaign, get your message out sure. there. Sure, they can visit us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. Uh, my web page is uh, in on, this, on the government side, so the non-political side, you can always contact us at the State House. You can email at stephen.bedore at state.ma.us. Uh, you got to give us some time to respond. It's, we get at times hundreds of emails a day and just sort of going through the ones from the district, ones from out of state, uh, it's difficult. But we try to get back to people as fast as we can um, on issues that are matter to people. But again, I think people, you know, we talked about this uh, off air earlier. You know, at the end of the day, people need to get more involved. And whether it's voting for me or not voting for me, voting for you or not, show up at the polls, get more engaged in your community. We all benefit from that. Yeah, we have the government that we picked, if, Absolutely. you know, and we can't complain if you don't go out and, and actually vote. Uh, what about the um, foreclosures? Um, I know that you worked hard on um, holding them accountable to maintaining the, the properties when they're unoccupied. How is that uh, coming along? It's coming along, but it's still way too many foreclosures. When I was actually in the AG's office, we had a, uh, I was part of this abandoned property initiative where the Attorney General's office would get involved in communities uh, and go after um, uh, homeowners who sort of abandoned their property. What we need to do is, is, is give families, especially working families that are either laid off as a result of this economy, just having a difficult time, more uh, leeway in terms of getting their feet 
on getting the house back in order. These are difficult times. We can't have banks just dropping uh, you know, right on top of these folks saying, you know, you need to leave. We need to give them more flexibility. It's better to have somebody in a house paying something than have a house abandoned, uh, which, you know, all kinds of stuff happens at that point. So we've done a lot on the legislative side. There's more to be done, um, but there's, you know, clearly ha owning a home or renting a home, we need to do more of that to get people back on their feet. The best way to do that, though, uh, is, is give, getting people a job. It's creating more private sector jobs. Well, we appreciate you taking the time coming in and being open and transparent with us. You've been watching behind the scenes. Uh, I want to thank Senator Bedore for coming in. I want to thank the crew at MCTV. And I want to thank you, the viewers at home, for watching. Join us next time as we go behind the scenes to ask the tough questions, bring you their responses, and we let you decide. Thank you for watching.